to know that that light was at the end of the tunnel for us as Republicans to get back our nation. So this is an exciting time as we've kicked off our campaign. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about the campaign. For those of you who don't know, I ran last year as a first-time candidate, never having run for public office before in my life, and we received almost 40% of the vote, and we did that in about a five to six month period of time of campaigning. So we were very happy with our success. So the decision to run again, uh, running for any public office is a tough decision, whether it's city commissioner, mayor, it takes time out of your life, it's personal sacrifice, it's time away from your family. So I guess the second time to decide to run for me came in March of, of last year, about five months after the loss. And what it really comes down to is making sure you have support at home with your family. And after that loss, so many people reached out to the campaign and thanked me for the great effort that we made for the Republican Party, for the conservative movement, and to stand up in Broward County. So with that message of outreach, through my business and through being at a park or Publix or a restaurant and being with my husband was key because without his support, I could never have made this decision to run again. So he said to me one day, after so many people had come up to us, he said, babe, if, you know, you've lived in this district your whole life since you were five years old. If you don't run again, how do you look these people in the eye? How do you tell them? that, well, we did really good, but, you know, I can't go again. It's just too much trouble. It's, it's a lot of work. I have to be able to look these people in the eye, the people I live with, I coach with, I work with in my community and tell them, yes, you are worth a second effort. You are worth me sacrificing again to run again. So he had to come to that terms and said, you know, you better do this. I knew the whole time I was going to run again, but it was just waiting for him to say, you know, go for it. So with that, we announced on March 28th, and beholden to us, we were so glad about the second week of April to have the president announce his selection for the DNC chair, our wonderful opponent, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I just was like, thank you, thank you, because she was about third in line, honestly, to be picked, and the arrogance of her to continue to want to hold her congressional seat here, but yet be the DNC chair, and wander all over the country and not come home here and represent this district just speaks volumes of what the liberal-minded people in Washington think. So since we've been running really hard these last six months, I've hired a great guy on my campaign, Anthony Bustamante. He worked for 18 months with Marco Rubio's campaign. So needless to say, he's been able to open enormous doors for us because we just cannot keep this race within District 20. This is a national race. It must be spread across the country. So not only in Florida, but we have traveled to Denver, New York, Washington. We'll be going back to Washington next month. And with our endorsements, I know she's not in the race anymore, but Michelle and Bach Bachman's endorsement meant the world to me. And she's a great conservative woman who stands for great values of this country, and she did a fine job in the primary. And with her endorsement as well, we've also had Mark Levin, which many of you know from radio. He's a great conservative, so that endorsement was about four months ago. Um, also, we've had Stanley Tate's endorsement, who founded the uh, Republican Jewish Coalition in Florida here over 65 years ago. And I'll tell you, that's not an easy endorsement to get. Last election, I met with him a couple times, and then this time it took two more meetings. And finally, he said, you know what, Karen? He says, I think you're a great candidate. You've proven that you will go out there and work hard. You will support the Jewish community. And he said, you have my full support. And uh, that opened up many doors for us, allowed us to go to New York and speak at the Hebron organization, which I was very honored to fill in for Mike Huckabee, who had to miss uh, because of his obligations with Fox News and the debate. So that's just a little bit about how the campaign's going. And um, women's group, as Carol's about to get started, mm -hmm. I want to speak on behalf of the FFRW Women of Florida. They have raised me so much money, tweeted, Facebooked, just shared so much information around the state of Florida, opened up so many doors for us. So, you know, I'm very proud to help support Carol well, as she moves in her venture to want to create a women's organization. Well, well, thank you, Karen. Maybe you should tell them you better join or, or I said so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something the left would do, Carol. I know, I know. <laughs> Republicans, we just want to convince people of how great and exceptional our nation is, and we just want to welcome people in. 
um, as independents or those disenfranchised Democrats, we want to bring them on board. But as I mentioned in my bio, I've lived here since I was five. And what, when you make a decision to run for office, it has to stem from where you come from and what you've been able to achieve in your family. And when my parents took that risk in 1969 with five kids, 600 bucks, and no job, and they decided California or Florida, I can't tell you how glad I am it was Florida. Um, so we came here, and my dad often worked as many as three jobs from the Diplomat Hotel, carrying luggage to rooms, National Airlines, driving truck, and it took us about five years. And it only took about $13,000 to buy that first restaurant. But we were raised with hard work, with morals, with responsibility, that no matter what, you're in the United States of America and you can achieve your goal and your dream at any level you want. And that's what I was taught. So when I started to see my country change, it really hit me like a brick of course 9-11. But April of 2009 changed me completely as I started to watch Greece implode. And I remember they were interviewing a young man on the street and they <coughs> said to him, why are you out here protesting? You know, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm 30 years old. I went to college to become a doctor. I've done everything right, but I don't think I have that country in which I can be that doctor in. And his next line was, why did my parents and grandparents let this happen? And that forever changed my life. And watching Glenn Beck and I became a 912 and I understood what was happening to the world and I started to realize what was happening to our country under this failed leadership and I started to recognize who was responsible for our district, our life, and our decisions in Washington and of course that was my opponent. So needless to say I didn't set my sights on something easy like dog catcher or starting off at the low end of politics, I dove right in. But I think this is time in our life that we make a decision to either get involved, stay on the sidelines, whether you're here to help a candidate or volunteer or help spread the word or walk for Chris, which is very successful, those are the things that we need to do. I didn't know that my calling would be to run for office. I was seeking out that person to run for office, but I just didn't find that. So then I said, why not me? And I know that I can beat Debbie Wasserman Schultz this time. I know I have the volunteer base but of course we always need more volunteers. Pat is my volunteer coordinator. He also runs the gun shows at Fort Lauderdale and he's also helped to get uh, Al Lamberti's there. They're going to be doing signatures there. We have the complete Saturday support, and Saturdays and Sundays, we have the complete support of the Fort Lauderdale gun show. And as we look ahead, I can tell you as a business owner, the economy is going to be our number one issue. We have survived several recessions in my business and we've done it, why? Because we've had to be smart. We've had to recognize where we need to cut back, if we need to lay off what we can afford in products. We had to live within our means, like all of us do in our households and our business. We've adjusted to the difficult climates, and this one, unfortunately, is being provided to us by our government, by regulations, by constantly threatening our taxes, by bringing upon Obamacare, things that we are going to work hard to repeal. But as business owners, we want our government to celebrate us, encourage us, not make it more difficult. We have to change our tax code. We have to eliminate capital gains. Why should the profits that I make in my business to grow and expand somewhere else be taxed again? I know some of the candidates talk about, you know, lowering it, eliminate capital gains. It's wrong. We've already been taxed on those profits. And our corporate tax rate needs to be lowered. Many countries, Canada's doing it, Puerto Rico is doing it. We have the second highest corporate tax rate. That's why we sit on $2 trillion worth of money. And that's why there's a trillion dollars overseas. Nobody wants to bring it back here and face those high corporate tax rates. Let's give them a holiday. Give them 90 days. Bring that money back here and invest it in an American company, in a bank, or in some type of stock, and I won't tax you on it. Let's encourage that money to come back home. But our government doesn't do that. It's our enemy in Washington. But it's not with guns, it's with votes. And it's with people that go there to make a career out of being a politician like my opponent. She has never worked a single day in the private sector. She wouldn't understand how to hire, create a job, manage a company. She just sits there and votes to spend our money foolishly, wastefully. It's not going to happen, not on my watch and not on any of yours. And this is an exciting time for us in 2012. We need a strong ticket. 
I, as a candidate, I need a strong presidential candidate. I need a strong senator to run for the state of Florida. That's only going to help all of us to, to continue to help get more Republicans elected. This is, these are difficult times, but I always tell people, don't get discouraged. There's high unemployment. A lot of people are struggling, losing their homes. We can fix it. Americas, we are not quitters, and especially Republicans. So we're going to work really hard on this campaign. I take it very seriously. This isn't a hobby for me. This isn't something I decided to do because I didn't have anything else better to do. I love what I do for a living. I love being a mom and a grandmother. And all this campaigning takes away from that. But more importantly, I love my country. And I want to look my children in the eye. And I want to tell them that I fought for you. I made a difference for you. And I will fight all the way. So as we continue our campaign across the state of Florida, I hope I can count on all of your support. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers. We have an outstanding mail program. We are mailing 4,000 pieces per week. We mail some in the district and all across the country. We get good mailing lists from other great Republicans across the country of donors. So we have a steady cash flow. And we were going to grow this very big. And you see how much Debbie is on the news. Okay, we are on everybody's radar. I can promise you that much. We've talked with many news outlets. Many people are waiting for the, the primary of the uh, presidency to calm down. But I promise you in 2012, this campaign will be the second biggest story that night as we defeat Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So I hope I can count on your support. I hope I can count on your vote. And I just hope I can count on you to continue to be good Americans, good Republicans, and work hard for all the candidates. So thank you very much.